So a War Room insider that used to work for Andrew and Tristan Tate is uh, talking about what really goes on there. So I'm going to do a reaction video to it. So let's get started. It's kind of like the Illuminati, but cooler. I was both working for Tate and I was inside of the War Room. They trusted me. The War Room is the most powerful network on the face of the planet today. I made the millions, countless millions, and you're basically part of the cult. The cult that is the War Room. The War Room is collapsing. It's not what it used to be. Andrew Tate sells his war room as a secret society that makes his members rich and gives them access to the global elite. The war room is the, is the number one enemy you wouldn't want you coming after you because they will get you. We're not that good. In an ex really? The war room is the number one enemy that you don't want coming after you because we'll come after you. It sounds like a threat, Andrew. Well, not all of us are intimidated by telling the truth that you're a human trafficker, a pimp, and a pedophile. Um... You and Tristan, Tristan, one of his tweets said, you don't really start living life till you're 30 years old because you could start having sex with 15 year olds. We all know you met Vivian when she was 15 years old and you started pimping her out from the time she was 15 up until now. So you're a human trafficker, a pimp and a pedophile and so is your brother. And the real world is a scam and the war room is a scam also and it's a cult. So uh, you can continue with the threats and I'll keep talking about you. Exclusive interview, a whistleblower has told the news movement what really goes on inside. My name is Eli X. Ampa. I am a Duke dropout and former head of sales and marketing at Corte. Eli X. Ampa says that Tate is exploiting his fans for money, spreading misinformation and using the war room to silence critics. A massive leak of data from the war room's private telegram channel obtained by TNN supports much of what Eli says. Eli worked closely with Tate on his website CobraTate.com for two years, selling courses and access to the war room. They'll say anything they want to get what they want from anybody. <laughs> we, we have many Twitter... Oh, they will say anything they want to get what they want from anybody. That's what I've been saying all along. And I've never even been in the war room. I just look at their tweets, the videos they've made, the court transcripts, and that's exactly what they do. They lie. The Tates do nothing but lie, manipulate, steal. They're on record. I mean, Andrew's on a podcast talking, saying that how 25-year-old women are old. So, I mean... That at this point, if you're a girl and you want to date to Tate's, you better be between the ages of 13 and 16 years old. Yeah, well, sounds like a uh, wonderful bunch of guys. Employees, we have Instagram employees, TikTok employees. When we want to, we can delete an account. There is actually quite a few members who put in an excess of $250,000 towards these courses, towards these events. I didn't fully believe in all of the things that the war room had to, had to teach, had to offer. But first, who is Eli and how did he get involved with Andrew Tate? All right. Well, so COVID happened around 2020. Everybody got sent home from uh, from college in America. So I went back to Canada. And I started searching up people, starting into manager, reptile space, et cetera, et cetera. Then I found, uh, found Tate, could zoom all his videos, and I spent some of my last money to join the war room. And that, that was it. I just thought he was, oh, he's the truth. He's, he's the G. And he was sort of like an aspirational figure for what I believe was a good ideal to be like. It wasn't expensive back then. The war room was both like... 1400 1500 US dollars, something like that. How much does it cost now to join? 7979 USD. So it's gone up quite a bit, yeah. At the start, I thought it was amazing. It's like, wow, all of this knowledge, all this information, I'm learning about mindset, I'm learning about all this stuff. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm 20 years old. I've had no other online experiences and stuff. I'm very, very impressionable. So I, I took basically everything that said as gospel at the beginning. Eli was 20. He spent all of his money to join the war room. It's essentially a bunch of Telegram channels where Tate fans can connect, discuss their interests, and have a direct channel to their hero. But Eli says it's a cult. It's a gradual process. It's not overnight where someone becomes indoctrinated into the, the cult that is the war room. It's a slow process. And it comes, it comes like a thief at night. You don't even notice it. Next thing you know, you're going to all the events and you're basically part of the cult. You, you would describe the war room as a cult? It's what they've called themselves in some of the events, some of the meetings. The war room is a private network. That's the most I can say. I can't imagine the Freemasons of old. Cult, I would say it's a negative word because that means it removes your individuality. Justin your Waller's idols, it means you're human part traffickers, of a, a pimps, and pedophiles. No say Keep listening to Waller. There's agenda, and you're no longer human. You are part of a machine. And I don't think that's the right way that humans should live. You describe your journey to yeah. working for Cobra Tate as right. through the war room. Yes. Was that similar to other people who you, like your colleagues, for instance? Almost, I'd say about 98% of all people who work for Tate are also inside the war room or have 
have gone through the war room first and they were vetted as to what kind of individual they were before they were hired. Very rarely we hire anybody outside because we just don't need to. So I got hired in July 2021. It was mostly online, me and back and forth. Most of my communication was me and Luke. He runs everything, he runs the video team, he'll oversee the marketing team, he'll oversee the sales team, the managers with that. But he also had access to Tate and his brother, Tristan. Also, there's some group chats with Tate as well. Tristan less so, Tristan does other things. He's not so involved in the operation as Tate and, uh, Tate and Luke is. You had access to the Twitter that I did, yes. I would, I would respond to uh, DMs from people and sell them on things. So your job was to try and get people, more and more people to sign up to... Hustlers University and the war room, absolutely. Would you be supervised when you were using that? No, they trusted me. Eli knows Tate's online sales strategy from the inside. Tate is a figure which you see and you're like, wow, he's a top G, he's a big guy, he's four-time kickboxing world champion, blah, blah, blah. Surely he gets the best girls. He tells you, yes, you can become like me. I was poor, I was out of shape, I was all of these things, and then I became this through sheer hard work and effort. I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, that's very viable. Let's follow Tate. And it's kind of hard. You can't really beat a Bugatti. Not many people have a Bugatti that's like $5 million. You can't beat the kickboxing world champions. So I'm like, okay, I am forever inferior to Tate because these are the metrics that I value and I... I say this all the time, the Tates, in order for them to survive and live the lifestyle that they have, they have to make you believe that, that you are inferior to them in every way and that you need them to survive. And I mean, nothing could be further from the truth. The only reason why they have the money that they do is because you're willing to give them your money because you think that they can figure out all your problems in life. And that's why both of them are going to be headed to prison for about 10 to 20 years pretty soon. So you're not inferior to them whatsoever. They're just making you believe it's like, you know, it's like they're doing magic on you and you and you just fall in line like, oh, all hail the Tates. And they're two pieces of garbage. They're manipulators, they're liars, they're human traffickers, they're pimps, they're pedophiles, they're ex-drug dealers. They've never really worked an honest job a day in their life. So I don't know why anybody would look up just because he drives a Bugatti. So, I mean, that's like being a drug dealer that has a mansion and a, and a Lamborghini. At any given time, the cops can kick down the door and take everything you ever work for. So it's, it's not real. It's fake. And everything that the Tates do is fake. They hold are important. So you're forever in this in this complex where you're inferior to Tate. Of course. You're always learning from him. You're always in a subservient role in that you need him. He makes you dependent on him because who else but the top G, right? So would you describe the way in which you were marketing Tate's product as kind of preying on male insecurities about getting girls? Absolutely. That's all it comes down to at the end of the day. I think a lot of men are looking for that content and they um, they fall deeper and deeper into the into the Tate propaganda machine. Hold on, ladies. All the ladies in that room around the table with Tate auditioning for his, uh, you know, his attention. You're all too old for him. You're all 20 and above. He, the, Andrew and Tristan only like girls that, you know, that are 13. I'd even go 12 to like 16 years old. So anybody that's above 20, according to Tate, that your uh, vagina is used up already and you're pretty much uh, unclean and you're worthless. So you, you ladies are way too old to be trying to hit on Tate. And then that's, uh, that's just how it goes, right? That's how we designed it. It costs almost $8,000 to get into the war room. But for many members, the huge sum spending doesn't end there. So you join the war room, you pay a set price. And then there are events, and they make a lot of money off the back end of the events. If you speak to a salesman, they'll be like, the war room's complete, you don't need to pay anything, there is no obligation to buy anything on the side, and technically there is no obligation. So the war room offers members other courses which cost even more money, and the leaked chats we've got hold of back this up. The operator course, for instance, is offered for £2,000 a head, and it's claimed to have had 300 plus graduates. So that's 600 grand in income. And the margins are actually really, really huge because uh, some of the events maybe cost 500, maybe a thousand dollars per head to uh, to run it, and they'll charge you 12,000, 18,000 dollars on the back end. So times that by like 40 or 50 people, loads of money to be made. These courses are marketed by other high-ranking members of the war room. Why? Eli says that half the money is given to Tate and the rest is divided between the leadership. And we're talking about some large figures. There is actually quite a few members who put in an excess of $250,000 towards these courses, towards these events, which is a lot of money. The best customers in marketing are repeat customers. Eli makes wild claims that the war room can influence social media companies to control the narrative around Tate. They even use botnets, he says. We, we have many Twitter employees, we have Instagram employees, TikTok employees. When we want to, we can delete an account. But our preferred method of choice 
Yeah, because deleting is kind of harsh. For small accounts, we can just we can just mark them, and that's it, and nobody really cares. But for bigger accounts, we use a thing called PR marketing campaigns and narrative control, meaning that we have big accounts that side with us. We have many smaller, real-looking, human-like accounts. So if you tweet something against Tate Online, both big accounts with ties to the war room and smaller bot accounts will challenge you with a pro-Tate narrative. Whatever the yeah, perceived attack happens. is on the Tate brand, that the marketing, the post, the tweet, the thread, whatever, is, uh, is purporting, we counter that with our Tate bots. We get big accounts to slander the person that's making that thread or that tweet or that post. I wasn't personally involved in those PR campaigns. We had another department uh, handling that. But I definitely was aware of everything. Yeah. So when Tate, Andrew and Tristan go online, like, oh, we posted a video. And if you look in the comments, 98.9% .9 of it was positive. That's their own people posting positive things for them. If somebody told the truth about what they do and how they live, which I do all the time, and I get uh, attacked by the Tate bots all the time, and I'll keep telling the truth and keep making videos about them until they're incarcerated. I will never accept a pedophile and a pimp on a pedestal, you know, who makes his money off the backs of 13-year-old and teenage girls. Eli claims that the war room's efforts to silence Tate's critics isn't just online. In one case, he says he was involved in threatening a Twitter user by sending men to his doorstep. And Tate's spoken about a similar case in 2020. I felt it because people turned up at his door. Once I had his address, I started putting, I didn't want to get banned from Twitter. Obviously it happened in the end anyway. Yeah. But at first I put his street name, then I put his house number. And then, and, and then when guys turned up at his house, when he looked out the window and saw the SUV, then he starts apologizing on the internet. Like, oh, bitch. And it wasn't even hard You're for me such to a do. tough guy, Richard, Andrew. All I did was I sent some messages to a few private groups on me. And said, look, cash prize, this guy needs to pay. He says that's not oh. the only time a war room member is threatened to send men to someone's house. I can't wait till some of your members get sent back in, you know, in an ex unexpected way that you don't like. I mean, we'll see how that plays out. Which, if true, is pretty mad. And also another thing you have to understand about Tate, he doesn't work on contracts. He doesn't work on NDAs, he doesn't work on all this stuff. He works on handshakes, brotherhood, mutual trust, and respect. Friendship. You're kind of blowing the lid in a way and showing people sure. behind the curtain yeah. how the Tate machine works. Why now? I was part of the War Room and Covert Tate team working. I quit Covert Tate team and we left amicably. I didn't fully believe in all of the things that the War Room had to, had to teach, had to offer. So I go inside of the rooms and I start reading the chats. And I see really, really misleading advice from some of the some of the members inside, especially leadership. So I go and counter it, and I counter it in a way where I kind of make them look silly, to be honest. Like I go in better, so then these guys kick me out, and uh, I guess that was it, right? I got kicked out. I reached out to Luke and I asked him, "What's the reason for why I was kicked out of the war? This is very, very unfair." And he told me I was acting in bad faith. How could I be acting in bad faith? I made the millions, countless millions, and I got paid. I would, I'm not going to give the exact amount, but less than half a million over two years. Eli says he was betrayed by the Tates. He was kicked out for arguing with leadership on tactics to pick up young women, specifically virgins or girls with low body counts. Eli claims that this hetero male concern of how to pick up young, sexually inexperienced girls is a major selling point in the manosphere. Virgins were always commented throughout history. I don't think it's a wrong thing. Uh, as long as you operate within the legal constraints of what is legal in your country, then I don't think there's anything wrong with, with desiring that. This kind of idea yeah. of like, um, like younger women, for instance, that they have less experience, so there's less complication. Isn't that potentially suggesting that you would be able, in a way, to kind of program a woman because they're inexperienced? With, with, great, with, great, responsibility, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Andrew Tate is currently facing charges of human trafficking, rape, and forming an organized crime group in Romania, which he denies. This criminal case is related to his previous business in webcam pornography. And the war room leaks show that many members are pursuing businesses in webcam pornography. Do you know much about Tate's experience in the webcam porn business? Was that anything you guys ever spoke about? I won't comment on that. Leaked chats from the war room specifically mm -hmm. talk a lot about OnlyFans management mm -hmm. as a way of making money. Is that, is that right? Again, I won't touch on that subject. You don't want to talk? I won't, I won't talk about that, no. However, Eli did explain to us Tate's PhD course, which was once sold on CobraTate.com. It's CobraTate.com, and okay. I've got a course on there that basically explains how I got girls to work for me. Tate's PhD. Right? It's a PhD course, yeah. pimping hose degree. Eli says that the oh, PhD... Oh, wait. It's, he called it the pimping hose degree, but don't the Tate's... You know, when they get in front of uh, real professional people like Candace Owens, Patrick Bet David... Um, Tucker Carlson, don't they claim that they're not pimps? Really? 
I mean, if you if they if those three actually did some homework and watched their uh, Andrew Tate's videos, I mean, he's pretty proud to be a pimp. He even teaches a class. Teaches men how to manipulate women into doing whatever they want, and that the war room encourages it. Basically, the PhD method is you uh, will sleep with a woman and then you will ignore her and then she will come and beg for your attention. You put a woman into a cycle of Pavlovian conditioning to where you give her less attention and she wants she gives you more sex and she also gives you more servitude in terms of her doing things for you whether that's cooking for you cleaning for you or eventually as you said doing only fans webcam so she fully fully depends on you and she has no auto autonomy of her own you manipulate her into being your slave perhaps quote unquote and then she would do anything for you and that's a phd successfully executed and then you would post it up inside the war when you get loads of uh, applause and stuff versus doing the right thing which is have a wholesome relationship with her based on trust and respect which i think is the correct way of doing things leaked chats from the war room's private phd chat room now obtained by tnm show tate teaching other war room members how he gets girls to webcam for him Tate encourages his students to isolate girls and lie to them to create dependency. He also claims he uses other women who are part of his webcam team to convince new girls. Um, let's go back to that. By TNM, show Tate teaching up. Sounds like a hard target for Cam or OnlyFans, right? So let's take bets. Will I get her to work? Anonymous uh, poll. No, too much hassle, FDB, yes, I'm 133 votes. The war room members how he gets girls to webcam for him. Tate encourages his students to isolate girls and lie to them. Here, this is Andrew Tate. She's broke and she can't go home and she can't leave the house. Man, I almost sound evil, but I'm not. I'm a shepherd leading the sheep. She doesn't realize that following me makes life better for her. Well, he brings the girl to his home. He isolates her from her family. He restricts her movements. He doesn't give her any money. And then he'll get on Patrick Bet David and uh, Candace Owens and Tucker Carlson and say he doesn't force girls to do webcam. That's a big lie. And Andrew and Tristan are both guilty of this. They're pimps, they're pedophiles, and they're human traffickers, and they know that they are. And these are Tate's own words right here. These are picked up in the court transcripts. Uh, this will be presented at their case with the judge. And let me guess, all the Tate fans are going to say, well, where is the evidence? To them to create dependency. He also claims he uses other women who are part of his webcam team to convince new girls to work for him. These leaks have allegedly been passed on to Romanian authorities in the criminal investigation. They've also been sent to lawyers who are pursuing a separate civil case against Tate for allegations of rape and sexual assault by four women in the UK. Now, here we go. The Tate spin, right? The guy's just making it all up. It's all lies. Deny, 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 deny. So, you know, typical Tate's deny, deny, deny the, the uh, you know, they're, they're giving big speeches, how hard the setup's going to be and all this other garbage and they're guilty as hell. And, you, and Justin Waller needs to be arrested also because he pushes the real world in the war room and he knows what's going on in there. He knows that they, you know, they human traffic women. So he's just as guilty and hopefully he gets picked up, picked up on some federal charges also. I'll make sure that when I uh, t tag this video, I tag the FBI in America. So Justin Waller needs to be arrested for human trafficking also because he's part of this network. And uh, I'll say it again, Andrew and Tristan Tate are human traffickers, pimps, and pedophiles. And how do I know this? I know this from the videos that they made. I know this from their own mouths. I know this from their own tweets. And I know this from the evidence that's been intercepted by the police of them you know, talking about their criminal activity.